I'm Rona Arado, author of the book, The Last Train, A Holocaust Story. The book tells the story of my late husband Paul's experiences during the Holocaust and of the miracle that put us in touch 65 years later with the soldiers who had liberated the death train that he was on, saved his life. I call the book The Last Train because it was the last of many trains that they were on from the time they were deported from Hungary. And this was the last one before freedom. Paul and Oscar were brothers. They were, you know, ordinary kids before the war. Two brothers kind of fighting, looking out for each other. They were in Bergen-Belsen, Paul with his brother and his mother. On April 9th, 1945, the Germans filled three trains with prisoners from Bergen-Belsen. The train that Paul was on went, sort of meandered for five days. And when it stopped, the German soldiers were setting up machine guns. They were gonna kill everybody. And that's when the American soldiers appeared and liberated them. When I first met Paul, we were uh, looking at pictures I had taken when I was in Europe. And I pointed out a shot of the Anne Frank house, and he said, I was in the same camp with her. And it kind of hit me that he wasn't talking about summer camp. It was that first reference to the Anne Frank house that triggered my realization that he was a Holocaust survivor. The way we met the soldiers was really a fluke. It all started with my son Daniel sending me an email saying, Mom, read this article and then, send it, then show it to Dad. And this article had come up about a teacher who was interviewing World War II veterans who lived in the town. At the end of that interview, the soldier, whose name is Carol Walsh, Carol's daughter, Elizabeth, said, Dad, you forgot to tell Mr. Roselle about the train. So Carol Walsh launched into the story about he, how he and his tank mate, George Gross, had come out of the forest on a reconnaissance mission in their tank and found this very long train filled with 2,500 Bergen-Belsen prisoners. When I read the article, I knew right away that it was the train Paul had been on. Matt Rizal decided to have a symposium where he invited Holocaust survivors who had been on the train and the soldiers. So that is how we ended up going to this symposium and that's how the whole thing came together. My, my children knew that, that their father, Paul, was a Holocaust survivor, but they had never heard it from him. He would not talk about it. After the reunion, and this is 65 years after liberation, Paul finally was able to talk about it with our kids. George Gross was one of the two soldiers who found the train. George and Carol Walsh. George had a camera. He took the pictures that we used in the book. So we had all of those pictures. I had some, I, some family pictures of Paul, the few that survived the war of him and his uh, parents, and uh, pictures that had been taken at the symposium. We just observed the 75th anniversary of the liberation of the Auschwitz concentration camp there are very few survivors left. And this may be one of the last chances for the liberators and the survivors to speak directly to audiences, especially to young people. We've got to keep these stories alive because we've got to be on guard that this kind of hatred, this kind of event does not reoccur. Prejudice is like a forest fire. You have a spark, that sets the leaf on fire, the leaf sets the tree on fire, and before you know it, the entire forest is ablaze.